We received a question that apparently it says in the Quran that the Jews believe that Ezra was the son of God. Where does this come from? And how do you respond to such a claim? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, that comes from um, the Quran. It's chapter 9. It's the chapter called Repentance, or it's at -Tabba. And um, it's the chapter 9, uh, Surah 9, verse 30. Um, and there it says that um, the Jews say that... Um, that Ezra is the son of God. The Christians say that Allah, that uh, the Christians say that the Messiah is the son of God. They speak with their mouths, um, but they really, what they have essentially is something they receive from the past and they're speaking absolutely nonsense. And uh, essentially the, um, and then and and God and Allah is against them because what they're saying essentially is a perversion, something essentially like that. And it was so. Now, what's very intriguing about this passage in the Quran is that, um, of course, everybody who reads it is going, "Wait, I don't know any Jew who believes that Ezra, a great prophet, and incidentally is considered." A prophet in Islam as well. Uh, I don't know any Jew who believes that Ezra was the son of God. And we say the son of God, that means the son of God in a Greek sense, in a crystal, it, the way Christians believe that Jesus was the son of God, that he was divine. Okay? There's another term, son of God, to separate that, that all Muslims believe that we're all children of God. That's not the accusation here. The accusation is that literally Ezra was a divine being, and and he, he, the Muhammad actually equates the, the Jews believing that Ezra is the son of God with Christians who believe that the Messiah, namely Jesus, Isa, is the son of God, and then he just condemns it. Now, it's very intriguing is that there are no Jews that I've ever met in my life that believe that. And the, the, the Islamic commentators, and there's an enormous amount of literature written on this passage by, some, by ancient commentators of Islam who were confronted with the same question, what, what, what Jews are we talking about? So the, the commentators, the Islamic commentators on this are absolutely brilliant. Um, many of them say that there was this Jew, I, I think the name they, they ascribe him to is a man named Phineas or Pinchas ben Ezra, who they say was this one Jew who had this crazy heretical belief and, and Muhammad was condemning him in particular, or as I find in the general consensus of Islamic scholars going all the way back. I mean, they really handle it brilliantly in that they state explicitly that there were just these Jews, there was a sect of Jews, perhaps in Yemen, who believed that um, who, who had this heretical belief that Ezra was the son of God, and then Muhammad condemns them, and it somehow disappears in the text, like every Jew believes this, but that's not what is intended by the Quran. That's very, very clear. Um, so so the, the Islamic uh, commentators on this, both old and more recently, um, all the consensus is, is, is right down the line. Jews don't believe this. There was either a, a sect of a few Jews who held this belief, and that would have been heretical. Incidentally, in, in Judaism, someone believed that Ezra was the son of God, not, again, in the Second Samuel chapter 7 verse type, like God is our father, not that way. But I mean the son of God in the Greek sense, in the Trinity, you know, that you know, he's divine. So we would agree that, that God's wrath would be upon someone like that. So that's how, how they respond. The, the, the Islamic commentators are very responsible and handle this absolutely brilliantly. There's a little bit of differences between them of precisely which Jews were these. Is this one individual Jew that was rattling this around? Or was this a, a small group of Jews? And those, 
Jews are no longer around. You know, so that's fine. So that's that's the source of it. It's a, it's the uh, surah called uh, repentance, ataba, and um, and so that's where it comes from. And you know, the commentators handle it. Very okay, well. perfect, very well said. So just to be clear, even if, even if they did think that, it's not in the same christological sense of no, 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 not necessarily. So here's the deal. Okay, this is a little complicated. So I just want to explain this point. There, there's two different. There's there is in the Jewish Bible people who are called children of God. The Jewish people are called God's firstborn son, Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. That does not mean that the Jews are divine. Being the son of God in that sense, or in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12 through 16, where we have the Davidic covenant, where God says to King David that you will have a son who will build this temple in, in for me this you know he will build a temple and he will be to son and he will be to me a son and I will be to him a father so that does not mean that anyone believes that Solomon was divine in any way okay so that kind of being a child of God or a son of God in the sense that someone is just performing the will of God on earth that's a it from Tanakh, that doesn't mean there's any divinity. Every per person is is a child of God, and in, in Islamic tradition, every person is a child of God, but not in the Greek sense. In the Greek sense, this is important. In the Greek sense, there was the great god Zeus, who its equivalent would be in the Roman Empire would have been Jupiter. And then there would be a whole range, a tier of gods, who many of them, in fact, were conceived by the big, big god. Jupiter slash Zeus were like, they created the whole world. But they don't have time for you. They're running the planets. They're running, and they're running around getting these virgins pregnant. So there were then a tier of gods who were inferior to the great god, but, you know, but were gods, were divine, and had unique. They were the son of God. Hercules would have been someone like that. Pythagoras would have been someone like that. Octavius would have been someone like that. Octavius, Caesar Augustus, the first emperor of Rome. Uh, Vespasian was regarded as the son of God in the Greek, Greco-Roman sense. So in the Greco-Roman sense, son of God meant, so this is very important, we're using the same language. This is, this is where everyone gets in enormous trouble. We're using the same language, but we mean something completely different. In the Greek sense, in the Greco-Roman sense, son of God meant you're a god. Like, for example, the son of a giraffe is a giraffe, right? The son of a frog is a frog. Now, the son of the frog and the son of the giraffe is not as great as the father giraffe. And there was a point in time that the father cat existed and the son cat did not exist, which means it was brought into existence, but it's still a cat. So therefore, the lower tier gods, the 12 Olympian, you know, Mount Olympus, they're gods, but they're not. You know, you know, Zeus says you. So you be very careful. We is Islam is is very. <laughs> Islam is is a completely monotheistic faith that believes in one God. You know, la you know la ila. There is no God except for. Uh, there's no, I mean, that's very, very clear. I mean, the, the Quran everywhere is condemning any form of idolatry in any way. It is, in fact, a p absolutely pure monotheism. So, th and this was a very big problem. And the emphasis on monotheism in the Quran is understandable because Muslims talk about this, is high, discuss that prior to the advent of Islam, um, the Arabs living in Arabia were completely pagan. And this is well known. In fact, it, um, this is way off off topic, not germane to this. But there is in Islamic studies a whole discussion of what what the what the Arab world, what the the Arabian Peninsula was like. The the Kaaba 
was a place where hundreds of gods were worshipped. So the pre-Islamic Arabia was completely pagan, and then Muhammad, according to Islamic tradition, had changed that and made them monotheists. But of course, given that this was a problem, that means they were coming from absolute paganism, the Quran is going to pound and pound and pound away. Don't even think for a moment that, you know, there is any other God, you know, la ila, we, we, in, in, in Arabic, ila can either mean the true God or not a true God, okay? So, but Allah can only mean the true God. So to the Muslim that says this every day, that there is no ila, there is no God, but, but Allah, but the one true God. So therefore, so therefore, number one, uh, Quran chapter, the Surah nine, um, verse thirty, is not addressing the Tanakh type of assignment or ascription of Son of God in the sense that someone is performing God's work on earth. That we find all over. That doesn't mean that that, that King Solomon was divine. No one believes that. And that we are all children of God, and God is our Father, as it says in the book of Malachi, have we not all one Father? That's not what the Quran is addressing at all. They're addressing a version of a, 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 a different, completely different thinking, although they're using the same term. The condemnation is that apparently there was a Jew or a small group of Jews. This is, again, this is the all Islamic commentators handle this brilliantly and say, no, there was this individual Jew who had this, this or group of Jews that, had, that held this heretical belief that Ezra was the son of God as in the same way that Christians regard Jesus as the Son of God, meaning the second part of the Trinity. So it's very clear if you look at chapter 9, verse 30, that they're equal, and he's condemning that. Now, these, if there, there were Jews who believe that. By the way, there were Muslims who believed that Muhammad was divine, and they were thrown out of court in a second. They were considered completely heretical. I mean, it's not like, you know, we all have our crazies. You know, it's not like Judaism or Christianity. We all have our wackos. So Islam, right away, I mean, the, the groups that tried to in some way deify Muhammad in any way, they were thrown out on the heads and out the door. Goodbye, Charlie. So there was, according to, I don't have any reason to doubt that, that there were Jews, just like today. We have all kinds of crazy groups. Jews, Jews. I, my guess is that um, we don't have this recorded in our tradition, but that's nothing to do with it because we're not really, we don't have um, Jewish writings discussing what Arabia was like in the seventh century. I mean, that's not, you know, Jewish life was like there. That's not there. So that's what's being condemned. And it, 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 Jews who would consider Ezra to be the son of God in the Greco-Roman slash Christian Trinitarian sense, that is a complete heresy. Uh, I have a qu question and, and also something to share. Uh, the question is, uh, what is the position of Uzair in Jewish, you know, uh, I think some people say that they consider him as son of God. Okay. So the first uh, question is about uh, Uzair and his position uh, among the, the Jews. The Quran tells us that the Jews said that Uzair is uh, the son of God. Uh, at Tabari, rahimahullah, in his uh, tafsir, uh, said that not all Jews said this. Uh, and and the, the ancient Mufassirin differed about uh, who exactly said this and how many. Some said only one Jewish person said this. Some uh, said that only a small group of Jewish persons said this. And in fact, uh, it does not seem to have become a widespread belief among, among the Jews. Uh, it seems that the Quran's point in this case is just that somebody may claim, like a Jewish person claims this, Osiris, the son of God, a Christian person claims this, Jesus, uh, Al-Masih, uh, Ibn Allah, uh, and, and people can, can claim these things, but this is only uh, claims from their mouths. They, they have no substantial 
um, reason or any backing for saying this. Uh, uh, so it, it was only a, a, a minority of uh, the Jews that held that uh, belief. Ezra, uh, in Jewish history, was uh, one of the editors of the, of the Bible. The Jews were um, taken into captivity into Babylon after they returned uh, from their captivity. Uh, that is when the uh, Torah was, was being composed, and Ezra was very influential in the composition of the Torah, or at they, as they would say, the, the editing or re-editing of, of the Torah. So that's one of the reasons that he has been uh, regarded very highly among the Jews. 